Ellie from Fig Securities for a little more on this. Mark, good morning to you and thank you for joining us. Now these comments about the balance sheet, I mean looking to I guess unwind some of the balance sheet and looking at what the market is now pricing in, maybe a slower pace of rate increases as a result. What do you make of I guess some of those comments that we've heard? Yeah, good morning, Leanne. I mean, I guess the key part there is actually he, on Friday, um, started to try to correct mar the market's interpretation of what he'd said previously in the week, where, as, as you rightly point out, in terms of if the Fed is starting to reduce its balance sheet, that's kind of is a, almost a pseudo rate hike, uh, and therefore um, Dudley's comments initially were interpreted that, that maybe the the hike of the actual cash rate, would, the Fed funds rate, would actually be slower than expected. Now, he corrected those on Friday, which is why you saw fairly significant moves in the U.S. Treasury yield intraday on Friday in the 10-year. So we went into the, the session in uh, New York, obviously on the back of uh, the U.S. Uh, strikes in Syria. And then we had the very weaker, uh, much weaker than expected non-farm payrolls, a headline figure. Um, and that, that set the, the Treasuries up to rally. And, they, and they, the 10-year yields dropped down to as low as intraday 2.27%. Uh, but as you rightly say, after Dudley's comments, you did see a backup in terms of prices. Yields did uh, move higher, and I think they closed at around about 2.38 in the 10 years. So that was, that was a key driver for the session, not anything else but Dudley's comments that in terms of some of the um, misinterpretation that we'd seen prior, uh, he was trying to correct those. And as you rightly point out, that kind of fed its way in terms of market expectations that hikes would probably continue at the pace expected to so maybe two or even three more hikes this year. Um, whereas before, I think the market was in, certainly interpreting Dudley's comments that maybe we would get less than uh, had, had previously be, been expected. Mm -hmm. Now, if we were to see, I guess, the 10-year yield moving back towards 2.5%, do you think this would underpin the US dollar, especially if the Fed does continue to signal at least two more rate hikes before any sort of short pause there uh, on their, their balance sheet? What, what do you think we could see in the, the US dollar? Yeah, look, I, th I think that's certainly going to be the case. You see, you know, if the Fed... Uh, highlights that it's going to continue on its path as expected two or three hikes this year and also as well you know let's not forget you know geopolitical risks have uh, have risen you've seen uh, Moscow and Tehran's response to the US airstrikes on Syria as well saying look that that is also a red line that's being crossed so you know the the US Russia uh, tensions seem to be rising again and you know, US Treasuries and US dollar seem to be one of the favorite uh, safe haven uh, plays and you, you see continue to see strength in those um, going forward as well so I think you'll probably see a bit of strength also on the flip side as well let's not forget there's been a fairly significant move in iron ore on Friday as you've previously mentioned on the show mm -hmm. seven seven percent falls down 20 percent since peak so that's impacting the Aussie dollar as well and you know you may see some further weakness in um, you know below that 75 cents a dollar mark uh, in the next few weeks if that uh, iron ore price continues to show some weakness yeah, that's um, interesting that you say that, obviously, playing a big part there. And uh, if those U.S. yields do start to move higher again, we have the RBA's financial stability review uh, this week. If that reiterates the RBA's concerns related to higher property prices, particularly um, in, in Sydney and Melbourne, do you think there could be a good excuse to kind of push that Aussie dollar even below 74 for U.S. cents? Yeah, I think so. And I, I think that's uh, the key probably data point, obviously, aside from the jobs data as well on, on the same day. But I think everybody will be looking at that uh, stability review from the RBA in terms of the details and the comments surrounding the uh, macro prudential regulations that have been put in place to try to uh, kind of uh, take the heat out of some of the property markets in, uh, in Sydney and Melbourne, as you rightly point out. You know, I, I also wonder whether we're going to get to the stage as well that, you know, that's you know, whilst macro prudential is actually a sharper tool than broader interest rate policy, we might actually see some macro prudential uh, policy down at the postcode level, very similar to what we've seen in Canada and also in New Zealand, where you know they are targeting the eastern seaboard uh, markets. You know, whereas Perth is just recovering, and probably Brisbane is also. Uh, kind of further along that recovery path so you know you don't want to see those markets especially Perth being kind of tarnished with the, the same kind of taking the heat out of the property market as you're seeing in Sydney and Melbourne so I think you might even see some uh, kind of more targeted macro potential rules coming in down the line if the heat you know doesn't get taken out of the market and we saw you know very strong auction clearance rates in Sydney and Melbourne over the weekend as well which kind of adds that to the pressure on the RBA uh, and I think, you know, as you, as you rightly say, kind of going back to the Australian dollar, 
you know, if the RBA can't um, you know, hike because it's kind of waiting to see what is potentially happening with the macro potential, then, then maybe you, you do see some uh, weakness again f uh, flowing through into the, into the Australian dollar. Um, just while we are talking the Aussie dollar and what's in store for the week ahead, and you briefly mentioned it there, the local jobs report, that is what um, it, we're all going to be watching um, this week with a lot of interest, but the RBA in particular. What, what do you think we can expect? How important is that jobs number this week? Yeah, it will be pretty important given the, the, the weakness that we saw last month in March. Again, you know, everybody will be closely watching that split between full-time and part-time. There's been a very weak trend there. And also, I think it's uh, going to be of more interest because the RBA actually did note in its, uh, in its previous statement uh, from last week that you know, the jobs market data was probably been a, bit, a bit softer than they'd expected as well. So if that continues again, you know, again, it does try to put the RBA between a rock and a hard place in terms of trying to take the heat out of the property market but you know supporting the more broader economy and if we're not seeing that jobs growth come through you know certainly not seeing that wage uh, inflation coming through as well you know it, it, it does put the RBA in terms of a, a really difficult position so it's one that they will certainly be watching as will the rest of the market and if you do get a very soft figure again that will probably put a bit more pressure onto, uh, onto the Australian do dollar tending to see it probably weaker against the US. All right, well, that one will be closely watched um, after, I think, the Aussie dollar, one of the worst performing currencies last week, as you say. I mean, the iron ore price adding to those moves there. But, look, lots to watch. Mark Bailey, as always, it's been wonderful getting your insights. Thank you so much. Leanne, have a great day. We will take a break.